Hey guys, I'm here with my good friend, author and, and creativity coach, Jamie Shepherd, and we're here to discuss her new book and the many health benefits um, that there are to being creative and in, in taking time to, to see that, look into that side of yourself. So, hey Jamie, welcome. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Oh, my pleasure, my pleasure. Um, so, um, obviously you've just written your, your, your very, for you've published your first book. It's not the very first book that you've written, but that you've published your first book, The Wisdom Board. And uh, so tell me a little bit about that. Well, I'll just do a little shameless, I'll show it. <laughs> there it is. It's very purple. <laughs> um, it's got a passion flower on the front and it's called Productivity Wisdom. And um, I'm hoping people will find themselves in that book. It's about no, I, creativity and finding it. <laughs> I, 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 I actually, from, from someone who's, who's read, but I think that's exactly what it's about. I think it's definitely about finding yourself. There's so much more to it than just being creative, isn't there? Yeah. Um, and, and I think creativity, the reason I think it's so important is because I'm one of those people that believes in a higher power. And so that means I think that there was... Um, this creation that happened and we were created and we were created in the image of that creator, which means we probably should make stuff <laughs> just like, just like, you know, the big gal up in the sky, <laughs> however you want it, however you want to name her <laughs> or him, either way. I, I like that. And um, so, so have you always, have you always been creative? I think that I was much better at it when I was really little. I think we all kind of do that. Um, my, my parents had pictures of each of us taken when we were three, and it was a tradition that my grandparents did. So I've got this picture of me sitting in a chair with a book at three years old. And I know I was creative back then um, because my mother was creative and my grandmother was creative. But I think over time, you sort of lose that little person. You're that three-year-old person. You're not a baby, but you're just being yourself. Nobody has kicked you down and, and made you forget who you are. And then, and then school happens and peers happen and mean girls happen and all the stuff and boys and, and you just sort of forget, you know, and then, and then you're like, Oh, I'm supposed to get married and have a career and do the family thing and, you know, get a dog or a cat and, and you, you just forget. And so sometimes we got to wake up again. <laughs> Yeah, and I think, I think also, I think to a degree, people worry, the older you get, the more we worry about getting it wrong. I think we, we, we always perceive things that, um, to be like a right or wrong situation, but that's the thing with creativity. There kind of is no right or wrong way, is there? No, because I mean, you have to learn to trust yourself and that can be really hard because there's a lot of voices in the world that make that sound like, I thought that meant I was selfish you know, if I was doing something for me. So I'm supposed to put my kids first, put my family first, make sure I'm on time to work. You know, there was very little, I thought selfish and I confused it with what I needed to do was love myself. That's a hard thing for women in particular, because we are, we are nurturing creatures and we, we own our emotions and we, we kind of use our whole brain and, but we, 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 we put ourselves back here sometimes and, yeah I, um, I see that do. yeah I see that all the time with with actually with with women even from a health perspective the whole idea of self-care of, of focusing on yourself and 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 allowing yourself to to, to make yourself a priority is, is a really big thing for people to get their head around sometimes just like you said mm -hmm. they, they think it's a selfish thing to do when they have family and and other commitments that the idea of actually sort of taking time out from that for themselves is 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 a hard thing for them to accept but actually when you when you allow yourself to do these things you actually you know you turn up as a as a better friend parent partner because you're 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 giving yourself that space you're happier yeah. more contented you yeah know? i think those are very very wise words we definitely and and our kids, if you got kids, and if you don't have kids, that's okay too, because there's somebody in your world that's looking up to you. And so you've got a model. You wouldn't want that person that's looking up to you to not, you know, value themselves and take care of themselves. 
So, you know, when you're, when you're loving yourself and you're allowing yourself to be whatever type of creative you are, and it's more than just painting or writing, what you do is incredibly creative. Um, your, your, your body is this temple. And, you know, if we put on makeup, you know, we're, we're, we're being creative. If we're sculpting our bodies, we're being creative. When we're putting together a plate of food, we're being creative. So it's just so much bigger than just, you know, and so that's why I'm really excited that you wanted me to be here because I, a lot of people think I'm just teaching people how to make flowers, <laughs> you know, or write a book, but there yeah. are so many ways to be creative. So I think what you're doing is so important because yeah. that is another important area where we need to take care of ourselves and have some creativity. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So Tell me about like the, the writing process for you is, was it, how, how did you find writing a book? I know the concept of writing a book for some people is a massive, massive thing. How did you find that? Well, I'm kind of a unique author in that I am an extrovert. I might be the only one on the planet. All the really good ones are introverts, Stephen King, you know, whatever, um, JK Rowling, they're, they're introverts. Um, so I, I, I do a lot of talking in my head, but my particular process, and I thought it was extremely unique until I heard about the guy who writes the, the Goosebumps books. And so I write a title first. So I have this, this word and I want to make something around this title. So I come up with the title. Um, and then I think, well, what are the chapter titles going to be? And I make my chapter titles. And then I set aside some time and I write the chapters as if they're all papers that I've assigned to myself to write because I've got to break it down. Otherwise it's overwhelming. Yeah. Um, this, this thing ended up, there's like 300 pages in here. I'm not capable of that, <laughs> but I did it, you know? So I just break it down probably similar to what you have to do. You know, if somebody, Absolutely. you know, it, it, where I'm at physically to be able to jump over the flames like you do, I'm probably <laughs> not going to be able to do that tomorrow. I'm going to have to, take some baby steps so yeah, yeah very similar yeah absolutely I think I think um I know I know for a lot of people actually if you if you tell them even for me personally if you'd have told me well oh, years ago that I would be achieving all the different sort of the physical sort of achievements I would be able to do I'd have it would have just been mind-blowing like you said just overwhelming the idea of being able to mm -hmm. do it but it's been a step-by-step -step, baby step process of and I think that it's like that for everybody. It's just, just breaking it down into the things that you can do, the, the tiny things that, mm -hmm. that get you to where you want to be. But the whole, if you focus too much on the end goal, that, that it, sometimes it can just mm -hmm. seem like a very, very big thing. Um, and the book itself, yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of like a, a voyage of discovery for the main character, isn't it? She's, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a life-changing thing. Is there kind of an autobiographical element of that to, you know, for you? Is there? A little tiny bit, but I, I this is actually my fifth book. So I, I, you know, I journaled when I was in high school. I'd count, count that as book one. I have my book of poetry. Um, when I was homeschooling my kids, I created a, a copywriting book. I didn't actually finish it, but Jewels for Homeschoolers for doing, it was a curriculum book. And then I, and then I wrote what a lot of people try to publish, and I would highly discourage this. I wrote my therapy book. And that <laughs> book I titled Shadow Stories for the Burn Pile. And I basically just wrote down all the things I'm pissed off about <laughs> and wrote chapters. And I let, you know, a couple of really, really close friends read, but that one is not going to be on Amazon or anything. <laughs> and then I finally was kind of ready to write. And that the book that I wrote that was supposed to be a self-help book turned autobiographical. And that was called The Dumb Blonde Approach. Got a little stupid with that book. And then I was finally ready to write like a writer. So I hired a coach, a, an editor. She really helped me by looking at the book that I, I had put it on Amazon, but I only did it as an ebook. She helped me kind of rip it apart in, in, in write in scenes. And, and, and you have to make a book about the reader because if, if I pick up a book, I don't want it. I don't care about your story. I want to hear my story. So I tried really hard in this book. Yes, there's pieces of me in there. You cannot write or paint or do whatever you do without putting yourself into it. So I tried very hard 
to, um, I actually, I had a good friend. I had, there is a wisdom board in the book and um, that was a real thing. So I had coffee with these friends. And so some of the characters are kind of real. Some of them are completely made up. Um, some of them are hodgepodge of people, but the, the protagonist, I made her an introvert because I am not. <laughs> I made her a redhead. I have birthed some redheads. My boys, some of my boys are redheads. Um, and I had a good friend that was doing some cool things, a different type of creative, and she was a redhead. And, um, and then also I, I made her a photographer because I'm the last person that you want to hand your phone and say, hey, will you take this picture for us? <laughs> so I tried to pick things that were not me. So yeah. as I walked through the book, I had to do some research. I had to look at other people. I wanted, I wanted to be, you know, and you can't help it. Dawn is actually my middle name. So I'm in there a little bit. <laughs> um, I, I tried to put myself more into some of the other characters, sometimes into the male characters. Um, there's a character in there that's a writer, but she's a hodgepodge too. But I, so I tried to hide pieces of myself in the main character and in bits and pieces of all the characters, really. Mm -hmm. um, so, but I, but I wanted, I don't want people to read about me. I want people to see themselves in there. And that's, that was the only way I could do it was to just make her the opposite as much as I possibly could. You know, there's, there's, there's pieces of, uh, yeah, it's a hodgepodge. <laughs> and and you mentioned the wisdom board group of women and i love that part of the book actually it's it's um it's it's that lovely idea of of uh lots of different people with lots of different strengths all kind of coming together to 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 boost each other up and to and to support each other mm -hmm. um and uh i just i just love that whole idea and and it's it's so true that that we we can all do wonderful achieve wonderful things but just sometimes we just need that boost that kind of input from other people sometimes from people with completely different experiences of our own um mm -hmm. and the characters all just i love the characters they all have so many different strengths and such strong characters that they're kind of um they're they're just amazing one of my other favorite bits that you do in the book which i which really i think um, definitely kind of connects to, to something that I do is it's one of the biggest sort of constraints I have with people when I talk about taking on kind of new healthy habits or changing anything is always time is always that that idea of I never have enough time and you have a really mm -hmm. you introduce into the book a really clever I idea of how to find that time in your day don't you tell me more about that well, it's actually something that I did. So while I was writing this book, because I wasn't writing it about me, but I was kind of writing it to me. What I, I'm, I'm not getting things done. I need to be productive. So what do I need somebody to teach me to do? So it's almost like I got a download from the universe <laughs> and it got each of these things. So, you know, it started off, I'm stuck and I had been kind of stuck in my life my life so I can write about that then she she puts together a way of, of budgeting her time which I think is the time budgeting that you're talking about and yeah. so she's trying to think her her kids you know and I had I had taught my kids in homeschooling we used Dave Ramsey's financial piece and he had like a curriculum for teenagers so they could figure out how to budget their money and I thought you know oh, I, I need to do that with my time because I have a limited amount of time I can't just go make more time I got 24 hours. I got seven days. We all have the same amount. Oh my gosh, I need a budget. So I literally took poker chips <laughs> I and I couldn't stick to it because you can't carry poker chips around with you everywhere. But I did have on my dresser, I had these poker chips and, and I, because you feel like I don't have enough time. And then when you do a sign, so I, a poker chip represented an hour. So when I stacked up the the, the 24 hours in a day and the seven days in a week, it's like, oh my gosh, I do have time. Yeah. So I did, it wasn't about the poker chips. It wasn't that everybody should go get colored. For a while I thought, I know, I'll come up with some really creative, colorful poker chips and I'll ship them out all over the world. <laughs> no, it, it's not about how you do it, you know, or how you organize it. There's a bazillion um, apps out there on the internet that kind of I've played with some of them that do the same thing. It's really just making yourself aware you do have time. 
It's just, where is your time going? So when you start monitoring it, either using the poker chips like the character did or paying attention to your calendar or finding timers. Um, I've got a woman that is one of my mentors and she uses timers for everything. And it really helps you to keep track of and pay attention. So it's just awareness. You know, I do have time. I just spent three hours binge watching whatever on Netflix. I have time. I could have been whatever. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, I see that all the time, actually. Um, people often say, you know, I, I don't have the time to prioritize myself. I can't find the time to maybe work out in a day or, or to cook something or to prepare something for, for even a short period of time. And um, it's only when we actually sit and we look properly at, at the the different things, the different elements that use up our hours in the day and our minutes in the day, um, how much time most of us sort of can waste on the simplest of things, you know, and, and how you can, if with enough, with enough kind of planning and just, just careful thought, actually there are, there, there are always, always opportunities to find time. And sometimes you then become more efficient at spending your day, at actually at getting more done in your day anyway because because you have more energy yeah. more enthusiasm so you actually you have a lot more focus and drive throughout the day so you end up being much more efficient by taking that time for yourself even if it's 30 minutes in the day it's just that that bit that gives you that energy for the rest of your day yeah and i put it at the beginning because awareness of time is kind of a starting you know figure out who you are yeah and then figuring out yes you do have some time to work with that's just kind of a good foundation for anyone when you start yeah. on whatever, you know, your new creative pursuit is. I know when, I know when, um, when I first got the book, I kind of, um, I was, I was intent on reading the book and I, and I, I, I that was it. I set an alarm on my, um, on my computer and it was like, right. Cause I thought, do you know what? I kind of, I can set aside some time to do this. If I think about it sort of, what am I doing when I'm eating my breakfast? What am I doing when, you know, I, I can find the time and actually just, just the enjoyment of, of, I hadn't written, I hadn't actually taken the time to properly sit and read the book in such a long time. And just that small step of going, you know, I'm going to schedule that. Like I schedule everything else in my day, because I think that's mm -hmm. the thing we get used to scheduling the work tasks, the appointments, mm -hmm. the, the big things, but we don't actually think about the, that sort of the things that we don't feel are important enough maybe to schedule, but actually it's so, so, it's so much easier to find that time and, and the enjoyment you get of actually, do you know what, I've, I've been wanting to read a book for a long time, but just that, that thing of scheduling in made all the difference. Well, I'm, I'm honored that you picked mine for your schedule because there's a lot of great ones out there. Nice. Um, on that time thing, I think one of the things, and this helps me, um, because with the poker chips she had, the black ones, which was work. And then the white ones, which was rest. And then the red ones, which was connection. And the green ones was growth. And the blue ones was her doing her creative thing. And so may, even if you just can make categories like that on your calendar. So like when I use my Google calendar um, and I schedule something, I put a color on it. Is this contributing to my personal growth? Is this me connecting with my kids or some friends? Is this, is this me investing in some personal growth by reading a book or watching a, you know, a how-to video um, or meditating, you know? I, and so I, those, those colors help me as I look at my calendar to see where's all my time going? Is it going Absolutely. to work? Is it going to rest? Is it, and, and yeah. so this just, and they can, they don't have to be the ones in the book. You can do whatever makes sense for you, but just, what are your, you know, pick some categories that are priority and figure out what each of your appointments in your day, you know, where those are going to. Yeah, I think you, you really summed that up well, actually, is that's, that's it. When you do that visual, actual, that visual exercise of segmenting out where your time is going in a day, it's, it's only sometimes when we stop and we do that. And I know as sort of the health coach sort of side of me, I do that very much mm -hmm. with my clients when we first kind of start working together as we look at kind of where are they spending their time? Where is all their energy going? And, and what areas are they really contented in? And what areas are, are, have they, are they not, but they really perhaps hadn't thought about. And it's then that you actually see when you, when you actually stop and, and, and really label out that time that 
you know, all my energy is going to work or it's all going into one or two directions. And, and sometimes in some cases, no energy is going to some of the really important parts of your life that, that need that attention and that time. You know, it's, it's, it's about balancing that out. And we all talk about work life mm -hmm. balance and it's never, a, yeah. it's never that, you know, I'm a, I'm a mum of four children. <laughs> it's yes. never that. Um, but we can create a better balance so that it's not all one way and none of the other. It's, it's, it's just about not having everything there or everything perfect and that nobody's life. And I think kind of sometimes we also kind of in that kind of, um, in the effort to have what we perceive to be the perfect work-life balance, we almost create stress in ourselves, thinking my life isn't balanced enough, it should be perfect, but it's not about ever achieving mm -hmm. perfection, it's about just evening the scales, so that they're not yeah. like this, but it's just slightly more balanced, I think. Well, and also when you have the colors on your calendar, you find, I find myself wanting to put more of this or that because I want it to be prettier. <laughs> if I get out of balance, my calendar is ugly and I want it to be pretty. <laughs> that, that's the kind of thing I would do. <laughs> obviously, there's, there's the huge kind of health benefits to, to being creative as well. Um, I know from, mm -hmm. from, from um, a health coach point of view, there are numerous health benefits, um, physical benefits in terms of lowering your blood pressure and, and steadying your heart rate and... Um, and the cognitive benefits of, mm -hmm. of improving our brain function and focus. And um, there are so many different ways because creativity, for instance, if you, if you play an instrument, because you're actually using both sides of your brain to play the instrument, one for that, the motor skills and the other for the melody, it actually, it's like, it's like mm -hmm. strengthening a muscle. The more we do that, the more we use both parts of our brain, the more focus and clarity that we have. So, and those, those benefits roll into our career in the workplace all of you know there are so many things that that rolls into but I think I think mm -hmm. creative creativity falls under that bracket a little bit sometimes like like health to a degree is I find that um, increasingly people are motivated f for the kind of the the tangible aesthetic results when they when they, you know a lot of people want to look a certain way when they approach me and they're, they're kind of the health motivations are on those kind of elements. But sometimes it's the, mm -hmm. the health benefits that you can't physically see that are the most important ones. And I think creativity is one of those ones where it benefits the thing, the parts of you that you don't see, you know, all that kind of that, um, that sense of achievement that we get from being creative and, and the relaxation and all those kind of things benefit our health in so many ways. Um, and because they're not sometimes the things that we can physically see the results of, it's, it's more of a feeling Then sometimes it takes a bit more um, kind of just opening people's eyes to the benefits of those things really. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, well, we're, we're, we're whole creatures. Yeah. And um that balance in the health part, like you said, I mean, if you go, if somebody's depressed, they will go to a counselor. And one of the first things many counselors will do, I, I actually had two counselor friends confirm this, is they will have you be creative. And there's a whole book, one of my, after I told my, one of my counselor friends who's read some of my other books, you know, about this one and wanted to see if I was on to something because I felt like the health aspect of what was important. And she said, you know, the, one of the first things I do, if someone is sitting in that chair in my office and they are depressed, first assignment is go to Hobby Lobby and find something to be creative with. Um, another thing they'll do is if somebody is just at their wit's end and they're, they're depressed, rearrange your living room which is, yeah. you know, takes your creativity. Um, and you have to exercise your brain, just like, you know, you exercise your body because that's a body part and, and creativity does that. So just like what you do with people, it, it absolutely is essential to, to our health. And, you know, it, and, and we're so, you know, you can't really chop up your body, mind and spirit. They all work together and so you you know our brains are connected <laughs> yeah and you gotta you gotta get it both 
absolutely absolutely yeah, very I much know, i know for me personally i i know um years ago i went through a, a very difficult time um and around the time that we were having children and um it, emotionally it was very difficult and i couldn't talk about it i didn't want to talk about it um and just at the same time one of the children brought back a, a flyer a poster there was a, a competition a, like a craft kind of competition at the school for the parents to kind of get involved in and you know i just i took it and and i kind of I sat and i quietly created and it was the best form of therapy at that point when i didn't want to talk about it but i just wanted to to do something that focused my mind on something different and and it was amazingly therapeutic i know i've read a lot of studies that say that people um with um stress and, and depression sometimes writing can be a very good outlet like journaling mm -hmm. um and i know for those people who've gone through significant trauma then sometimes painting is better because if if that trauma is too painful to write about if actually getting those words out is, is too difficult then just just actually the, the the experience of creating something with your hands in clay or with paint is 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 another way of channeling that so um i think I think there are huge powers in being creative that, that often we just overlook. And I think it's one of those things because like you said, we take on our life, our, our busyness, our, our, our careers, our family. And um, a bit like how sometimes if it's not viewed as, as the essential, the thing that, that is required to complete my day, then very often mm -hmm. people kind of put it to one side. And like you said, as we become older, then, we kind of we forget to get in touch with with that side of ourselves um yeah although there's something that happens where we pause women literally i mean we have these nice cycles and then it all pauses and it's almost like well it's like mother nature is having um a pause right now because we've got this stupid pandemic <laughs> maybe it's maybe it's mother nature menopause i don't know but there's something about when you pause yeah. that you just stop and you you pay attention and so yeah. um you know yes we're great at it when we're kids and somewhere in the middle we get messed up and then at some point there's a trauma or there's a thing or uh, get the hot flashes <laughs> <laughs> and and you just it and it causes you to reevaluate and think and get back to oh yeah i like this thing <laughs> yeah oh absolutely and i would wholeheartedly recommend the book to anybody it's it's a very very enjoyable read um so sort of just to kind of to finish off what's your advice for somebody who who perhaps has kind of lost touch with that creative side of themselves or for someone who really wouldn't know the first place to start for somebody who's never really considered themselves to be creative before well, you talked about wisdom boards before, and that was a big piece in the book. And I, I think when you connect with other people, I mean, we, it is not good for a human to be alone. We need some help. And so, you know, you and I connecting and having this conversation is a, is a point to go, oh yeah. I mean, just, just our conversation here, we're both probably getting ideas and thinking of things going to coffee with a friend in, in getting a group of, of multiple friends. Everybody's probably got a group of friends that they look to. And, and when we do that, when we, when we get someone else or find a mentor or a coach that can help you see things that are already inside of you that you just forgot were there. Um, you know, I, I've got some tools that I use um, in my, I've got a, a Facebook group that's free and I've got a tool in there that I created to show it's pretty diverse types of creatives, but um, I've, I've just shown that graphic to some people and they've been able to see, oh, that's creative creativity, you know? And, and so they're, they're just ways, you know, you can take personality tests. There's all kinds of ways to get better in touch with who you are, increase your awareness, and, and, then, and then giving yourself permission to trust yourself and to do whatever your creative thing is but we, we need each other that's the secret each other and, and i think also it's just understanding isn't it that there's there's no right or wrong way when it comes to creativity it's just about expressing mm -hmm. yourself isn't it it's just about about letting that side of whatever that happens to be um so mm -hmm. everybody's the way the way i express creativity would be different to the way you do and, that, and that's just fine you know it's just 
yes. about, about knowing that however we do it, it's just, it's beneficial to our health just in doing that and then having a go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I, thank you so much for, for coming and letting me chat with you today. Well, thanks for having me because I don't know if you remember it from the, the very end of the book. The whole conclusion is engage in conversations. So exactly. I love this. This is my favorite thing. <laughs> now, it's always a pleasure to speak to you. And, um, and for those of you watching, I will pop a link to, to Jamie's book uh, down below. Do go and, and have a look at the, the Wisdom Board. It's, it's amazing. It's so much fun. And check out Jamie's Facebook group as well. Um, I'd highly recommend it. And um, yeah, and just go out there, get creative. And if you have any questions about being that, then um, by all means get in touch with Jamie and, and she'll be able to help you unleash your creative side. <laughs>